Okay, so today we're going to give a presentation on the Frank 1630 lathe. We'll run through all the uh, startup features, programming options, etc. The Frank lathe is manufactured by Southwestern Industries. My name is Rich Kunz. Uh, the first thing from a dead startup on the machine, you have to walk around to rear of the machine, turn on the incoming power, there's a switch here that will bring in 110 power that activates the control, turns on the lights, and then a switch on the control that activates the CNC pendant. So that pendant now is booting up off of an internal memory card. A chopped up version of Windows XP on that memory card and loads the prototype software. So it'll take a few minutes to update that. So it comes on in this screen here. It's now looking at your network to configure your network. Down. We have this key here. First key you press is check system. And strictly for safety features, it requires you to input a maximum spindle RPM. And so you want to do this to a maximum RPM that you feel is safe for the particular part and material that you have in the machine. So in a case like this here with a piece of brass that isn't hanging too far out of the machine, it might be something like 1,000 RPM. And that has to be entered. We have these entry keys, the incremental set and absolute set. These are entry keys. So we have to complete that command by pressing either one of those two keys. So now it's in the main menu or page one of the book, if you will. So a little description of the keys over here, the regular Gamera keypad. When you enter dimensional information, everything defaults to positive. You have a negative key here that you can enter a negative dimension if you need to do that. Incremental and absolute set. Primarily, you're going to use the absolute set key as your main entry key. There will be some sequences when They'll give you an alternative if you want this feature, enter it with an absolute, versus if you want to select a different feature, enter it with an incremental. So you'll have to kind of watch for that. Spindle forward, reverse, and off. And then you have a feed rate, F for feed rate, S for spindle speed, override, that you can toggle back and forth between the two and increase either the feed rate or the spindle speed, or decrease it. Go on the stop switch, and of course you have the emergency switch, which you want to pay close attention to that if something goes wrong. And so the emergency switch will shut down the spindle instantly, and shut down the CNC motion. At that point in time, when you're ready to resume, you can just pull that out, you have it lost your program or your setup or your positioning, so you can continue on. So um, while we're looking at the keypad here, on page one of the book, the main menu, you have different modes of operation. You're going to have this green dialog box always asking you to select a function. So select a mode of operation, digital readout, it's a manual machine. You're able to come in there and machine the workpiece without programming. Next mode is writing a program. So you go in there, you write a program, returning, threading, grooving, and then you move on to the next mode is grayed out because there's no program in edit. There's no program in current memory, so there's nothing to edit at this time. You have a setup mode. The setup is going to prompt you to select your tool types. So, in certain routines, 
we need to know whether you have a turning tool versus maybe a threading tool. So in the setup mode, you'll have to choose these tool types and go through and touch them off on the workpiece. And only certain routines can use certain types of tools. So if you choose the wrong tool type, it'll allow them out and tell you. The setup mode will also give you a graphical representation of the part. It'll show the tool path. And you want to do that before you go in run the bar. So you'll get any alarms, you'll get any visual pictures of if you're going to send the tool someplace that you don't want to. So you want to go through those steps and then once you're satisfied with that you'll move into the run mode. Of course the run mode's grayed out, there's no program in current memory to work. And then finally the program in and out mode, that's for accessing the network. You can have a USB thumb drive plugged in here to retrieve or save programs, to open up DXF or electronic files that you save to the thumb drive. There's also additionally over here, there's a second USB port that currently there's a antenna for a mouse. There's a PS2 board if you wanted to use a keyboard. So, in the shutdown process, the first thing we're going to do is go to digital readout mode. With tool number one in there, we're going to return it to home position. Ready to go, press go. Remember, in an automatic routine, the door needs to be closed. Tool will now go home, which is 4x4, four four, X and Z. So at this point here, you can now get back to your main menu, press the system key, you have the shutdown function, and it instructs you not to just toggle off, but you have to have Windows save its settings. So if you wish to continue the shutdown process, press the yes key. Windows saves its settings, It'll give you instructions when it's time to shut down. So now, with that setting there, you can shut off the power here, the CNC control, <coughs> open the side cabinet, shut off the 110 incoming power. If you want to really complete everything, shut off the 220 power. Just didn't reverse.